Guys, what's going on? Andy Elliott. I'm here with my brother Asim. Asim, obviously, he's a really good looking Pakistani <laughs> dude who kills it, crushes it, and is amazing. But he also owns a company called Empower Energy, like empowering people. But they're in the energy business, which is the solar industry. And a lot of you are like, oh, I'm sick of hearing all this stuff about solar. Dude, you have no idea what you're talking about. So I want you to slow down and I want you to immerse yourself into this podcast. And I want you to understand this less than 30 minute video this education this knowledge that we're going to share with you could be worth hundreds of thousands it could be worth millions it could be worth a hundred million it's your choice okay what do you see so hopefully this video gives you a new set of eyes it seems going to give us some knowledge about the inside of his company how he's creating more millionaires than anyone else in the solar industry and honestly the guy's heart this guy cares he's been in sales his whole life and by the way you know what i've learned self-made people are people that have gone through the craziest struggle they've come up but they're, they're the, the crazy dreamers you know what i'm saying and by the way since you're you know i'm gonna say like you're in, i say like if foreign right like you're from another country and yeah. you come here yeah you understand the opportunity of the united states so if you're here and you're in the united states listen up because a guy like this that found the way knows the way and he's teaching it to all of his people inside of his company which doesn't exist. So it's not just about making money. This is also about getting heavily educated so that you can live an amazing life. So Seem, I just want to tell you, thank you, right? I'm super grateful for you. We've been together for like a year now. Yep. I've watched you grow. I've watched you just, you know, go psycho. And, you know, you're just constantly, every time I see you, you're getting sharper, your eyes are more alive. The eyes are the window to the soul. Um, so enough about me, because you guys know I won't shut up. So I'm going to hand it over to my boy. And um, really start with kind of what you're doing now, because I like, I, I'm so like proud. And I like, I want to introduce you to everybody here. Um, what you're doing and then also walk us back to like how you grew up because a lot of people think that hey maybe his dad gave him money your dad was a cab driver and there's nothing disrespectful about a cab driver but it seemed wanted a different way and i think you'll tell us a little bit about kind of what your your goals and your dreams were and then how you got there so tell us a little about what you do know how old you are do you got a family just some little stuff like that. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're hearing me talk to my brother Asim here right now, clearly you can tell he's extremely successful. This guy is wealthy, but he loves making other people wealthy. That's why I have him here with you today. He's got in a level, I would say a level 10 earning opportunity, but I'd say a level 11, which means I'm outside of the 10. Why? Because you're gonna make a lot of money, but also they're gonna teach you how to invest it to actually generate and accumulate real wealth. Dude, having a mentor inside of a company, working for the great organization with a great leader and somebody that can show you how to get wealthy doesn't exist. Just doesn't exist anywhere in the world. So there's two ways. I want If you're looking for your way out, if you're looking for a killer opportunity, just like Asim was born in Pakistan, his dad was a cab driver, and he created his own way, okay? And if you're looking for your own way and what you're currently doing, the play you're currently running isn't working, you need to run a new play. And if you've got the courage to do it, hopefully this podcast has given you the courage to say, hey, man, I'm worth more. And a leader like Asim will take you there. So number one, go down right now in the description box in this YouTube video and just click on the link, answer the questions, fill out the little video, and Asim will reach out to you in the next 24 hours or his team. And that's it. They'll send you the information. You can get it handled. And then they'll jump with you on a call, okay? So I just want to tell you guys, I appreciate you. I love you. If you're looking for your way out, if you're looking for a level 11 earning opportunity, you found it. Let's get back to the video. Yeah, 36 years old, um, got a two-year-old son, nice. uh, and I think you know being a father is probably one of the most important roles, if not the most important role we'll have. Yes. Have an amazing wife, uh, which is super important when you go through Facts. the struggles. Um, most important decision of your life is your plus one, in my opinion. Um, but with solar, I mean, we, we've been growing, we've been crushing it, but to me, the biggest and most important part is seeing a lot of our guys and gals build an amazing life for themselves. Why, why did you fall in love with like just seeing everyone else win? You know, because a lot of people win and it's just all about them, right? But like, like when did that shift happen where you just really want to start taking care of everyone else to a really high level? Yeah, I, I think I had some good coaching along the way early on and I, I was raised on the principles where if you take care of your people, everything else works out, mm, right? That's right. So that was helpful. But also, I think most people have two peaks in life. So if you've got your own financial goals, and I know there's a lot of guys that are in sales, and that's awesome. But once they get to that, whether it's a passive income number, hey, I want to make X amount a year passive income, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, you look around and you say, like, well, well now what? Right? And for me, that now what was, this is cool, but, like, the flashy stuff or just the passive income just doesn't fulfill your soul anymore you feel and like there's, maybe there's like a little hole in your heart like absolutely I'm, like I'm, I'm financially set 
but we're still missing a piece of the puzzle. And Andy, if you are financially sad, but you have nobody to enjoy life with because all your buddies are still working, like what, what, you know, what is there to that? And you don't get to take that feeling. Mm -hmm. You can only take it so far. Yeah. So for me, it was like, hey, now my mission has become how do we empower people to build mm -hmm. an amazing life? In this case, you know, we have an amazing vehicle that also allows them to use sales and opportunity like I did to jumpstart their, how quickly can they get to job optional? So I absolutely fell in love with that. And there comes a point where the money hitting your bank account's cool, but seeing your people get their biggest paychecks mm. or seeing them be like, dude, yeah. I just bought my first investment property. It's like I watching was, your son do something cool. It's awesome. It's like that gets you so much more fired up than just mm -hmm. you making money, right? So For that's sure. where we're at. Uh, we're growing like crazy. We'll do over hundred million in revenue this mm -hmm. year. Uh, and we're more importantly, we're on pace to double next year, double to triple. Your, uh, your company, they they sell. Am I right? Do we install on the solar side? Yeah. We do. We do everything. Yeah. We so, install so in house. Let's explain that because you have two sides of your company. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So the first thing is we handle the fulfillment. We install. We're an install org. We have W two crews, all that in house, and then we also have salespeople that work direct with us. And with a lot of people that you know come join our company, one of the things they love is that there's not like a stack of a bunch of middlemen. So p people that work with us direct, there's not 72 heads in the middle making money doing nothing, mm. right? Can I tell everybody this real quick, just in case somebody doesn't understand this? Um, so when, when you sell a car, you go to the finance office in the same building, they do the paperwork, customer takes the car home, mm -hmm. right? In solar, you know, there's, there's a company that's gonna install the solar. Does that make sense? And then there's the company that sells it. And normally, I would say, I don't know what the odds are, but most of the time there's a sales team that goes and sells it and then they contract the work out to an installer. Yeah. And so there's two people and then the customer usually gets torn in between somewhere. They blame it on each other and there's things like that. But in your company, literally, uh, you're a great installer. So sales orgs do plug into your company and you take great care of them. All the time and also on that, Andy, when and they do, we check, the, we check the stack to make sure they're being fair. So even if it's a sales partner working with us, any of the reps can feel confident that nobody's being greedy or egregious because we check that stack. I love that. So that alone gives our any sales reps and any sales orders working with us a ton of confidence knowing that it's not just like, hey, these, these guys are completely hands off. It's like, no, we vet them. We vet the leaders. We vet how much they're keeping for themselves. Are they just like making everyone else work or are they being fair in the opportunity they're providing as well? So whether it's a sales org working with us or a guys direct, they can feel really confident that it's, it's fair. Um, so anybody watching this right now, yeah. anybody that says I'm looking for my way out yeah can, can we can we, you've been in sales your whole life can we tell like your story so like if anybody's here and they can put yourself in in your shoes and then like you're obviously gonna put yourself in their shoes to like here's your way out um, if they decided to be like hey I want to join this guy's company like, yeah, I want to be on. with him and can we say you're his model um, so he, most of his most of his business is in the Northeast right now they're moving over Florida they're moving to a bunch of other states but they're in the Northeast this is so cool you know a fireman like a fireman works like two days on X amount off yeah, yeah. two days on he has tons of people in his company I need you to hear this that can make mid six figures to seven figures a year working ten days on 10 days on, and then they go 20 days off. Dude, we just had one of our girls made over 600 grand last year. Yeah, let's 10, 20 that. program, 10 days of working really hard and tense. Uh -huh. We fly them in, we you know, put them in Airbnbs. The point is to work 12, 14 hour days, so no, not hiding that. You're squeezing in a month's yeah. worth of work into yeah. those 10 you're, days. You're earning your 20 days. Absolutely. Yeah. And then those 20 days, they either get to work remote or they're working on some pipeline stuff, but it's 10 days is the intense, hey, here's the prospecting, let's rock. But yeah. that allows people from, in this case, somebody from South Carolina to come work with us in the Northeast, somebody from Colorado to come work with us, Texas. These are real examples of people that are crushing it. Yeah. And they're just able to do 10, 20. And, and, and so they don't they don't really necessarily have to move. Now, a lot of don't. people move to where yeah. you're at because they're like totally immersed. Yeah. But if somebody's like, man, I got my life together right now. My yeah. mom, you know, I gotta take care of my mom. My, my wife's sister's here, we can't leave her. Okay, cool. You can do the 10, 20 program, crush it and kill it. And literally you're destroying it. And by the way, like you're, your, your, your family would be like, Hey, you know, you're gone. You're gone right now, five days a week. And now we get to see you for 20 straight. And then you're gone for 10. Oh my God. And with the check and how you can get ahead and the, the goals you can plan a couple good years totally. and this could really get you far ahead. I tell people all the time, you give me three to four years mm. of all in effort and I will get you to job optional. Like in terms of, obviously you have to have income to invest to get to job optional. Can you, can so, you tell us, cause you, you have your own language, right? Yeah. Job optional to you, the definition of that is what? Job optional is where you have enough coming in from your investments, 
let's call it 100 grand, whatever the number is, where it comfortably covers your expenses. So now your job option, I, I don't say retired because not nobody that's driven ever really retires. You can do what your purpose, your you passion, whatever you, want. Whatever you, you want. Keep working with us, fantastic. But if you choose to graduate out of that phase, like, dude, we'll celebrate it. We think it's a celebration. We're not here to hoard. We set yeah. you up for the next phase of your life. Yeah. And you're, you're ready to crush it. So yeah. well, me, I want you to hear that. Imagine this, if in three years, you literally, whatever your life looked like, you had enough money to pay for all of that. So you didn't have to work, so job optional. Because of the money that you made from this and the investments you did, you have enough passive income coming in where literally you're set up for the rest of your life and you can do whatever you want. Keep grinding and killing it or change it up. It doesn't matter. But the, the, the fact, optional means choices. Yeah. Yeah, like it's cool to have choices and a lot of people don't, right? Totally. Um, anyways, and it frees up the that. most valuable asset we have, which is time, right? You can mm -hmm. have a billion, you could be a billionaire or you could be a time billionaire, which is like how many, how many, you know, if it's a billion seconds, whatever that is, 30 years of complete freedom. So we tell people what's more valuable than just money in your bank account is getting to time billionaire, which is mm, that's a good X one. amount time of years of just freedom because that's the most valuable asset we have. Dude, I'm going to start using it all the time. I love it. You yeah, should. Listen, I know you want to be a millionaire or billionaire, but what about being a time millionaire or time billionaire, which means you made the right choices so you can do whatever the hell you want with your time. Exactly. Dude, don't even get me started. I already got this shit down. I love it. Okay. Well, dude, on the sales side, so I, uh, you know, I, I came here. Dad was a cab driver. Pakistan, uh, you were 10 years old. 10 years old. Okay. Came to the States. Uh, Brooklyn. Dad was a cab driver. And uh, big shout out to my dad because, like, he had businesses in Pakistan, but mm -hmm. he wasn't above, hey, I need to do whatever my family needs. So he actually instilled a lot of really good mentality into me. Like, he wouldn't even let me work jobs. Uh, at 18, he was like, I don't want you to work a job that's just going to give you an hourly thing. I'd rather you work something where you're going to learn a lot, right? Because he's like, you're either mm. going to be paid for your time or your mind in the long run. Mm. So Write that down. Either you're paid like, for your time or paid for your mind. And he's like, dude, Damn. invest into Write growing. That down. He's like, invest. It's, like it, it's not even just like, yes, the seminars, right? And I've invested a ton of money into those. But like the jobs that do stress you out, the jobs that make you think instead of just being a little robot, right? So he mm -hmm. instilled so much of that they in me. They create character. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I did that, you know, um, crazy enough, at, at one point my dad uh, was diagnosed with hep A, B, and C. Um, mm. So that was tough and we were getting calls that he'd have four months to live. He ended up making it so he's fine. Wow. But I just remember those moments just stuck with me, like even in middle school where he was like, hey dude, when I'm not here four months from now, this is how you support your, you know, sister or mother, right? And it's like, it makes you grow up pretty quick, right? Yeah. So either way, he ended up making it, which is fantastic. Um, got do, a job. Do you think that during those times, that like those were the times that really helped like shape your whole future? I think they definitely helped. And I, frankly, I think one of the reasons why I was so passionate of like, dude, I gotta get to job optional, is knowing like something could happen. Right. Yeah. And like if something happened tomorrow, is there enough cash flow for my you know, wife and kid to be perfectly fine? And now for my parents to also feel like, hey, this money is going to take care of us, even if something did happen, because I'm not God, you're not God. So we don't get to That's call those shots. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that did drive me extra hard to be like, hey, that can happen to anyone. They, they say a lot of people until they have their own individual near death experience or, yeah. or die and come back. You know, until then, the, the food doesn't taste better. The air doesn't smell, you know, like, yeah. like you don't re, you don't appreciate, you don't appreciate it no more, things. you know. But, you know, thinking dad, because I talk to my kid all the time, and I talk about death all the time. Yeah. And I say, you know, like, hey, and my son's like, dad, I don't like it when you talk about this. And he always cries. Yeah. And I say, listen, I'm just trying to say it's, it's not up to me. Yeah. It could happen. I just need to know you're ready. I need to know your sisters are good. I need to know your mom's good. Yeah. Okay, like... Like, I have to talk to you about this. So if something ever happens, you'll remember that we had this conversation. And they're hard. But, like, the fact that that was a real deal, because I never had been, I got a bad doctor's note or a bad doctor's report and told my son. But the fact that that happened, I'm sure you're like, okay, this is real. This can happen. It was a real thing that happened to your family. And I'm willing to bet deep inside to your, like, what you anchor, your why, like why I'm going to freaking give all I got. You anchor that, that time is is something I can't control. Totally. And so anyways, I think that that's a blessing for you. Totally. That makes you very dangerous. And it helped out that my dad did okay, so it, was, it worked out well. Yeah. But and at the time, like, dude, it's, I think it's the first time I remember cursing out God, right? But like mm -hmm. hindsight's twenty twenty, or like, dude, that, like, that might have been a really big pivotal moment in my life. So I, I know it was. I can tell. Inside yeah. of you, like nobody can see what's inside of you. Yeah. But that plays a key anchor in there. 
And I guarantee it, dude, that, that, that is a reason why you are where you are is because that scared the hell out of you. Absolutely. And a lot of things that you felt, you probably would have never felt had that bad doctor's note not come in. And I'm glad dude, your dad's great and amazing. Dude, six, but, right? like sixth, seventh grade, like those are the, you know, how do you balance the checkbook when I'm not here? Kind of, <laughs> kind of puts things in perspective, yeah. but so, everything worked out great there. Um, got offered a job in sales at 18. I absolutely sucked at sales, by the way. Like I okay. was so Let's bad. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Because a lot of people, I tell people sales and leadership will get you rich. You need to get in sales. And everybody thinks that they get into sales and they're either made for it or they're not. Yeah. Okay. I suck too. So you said you suck. So let's I was go horrible. That. I was horrible, horrible. Probably like, you know, number 50 out of 50 people in the office. Uh, but back to like, to some of my mentality was just like, man, this is frustrating as heck. And the paycheck isn't there yet. Right, like, because you have the visions, you're gonna do great, and you know you face adversity up front. Um, I just remember thinking, this is not the NFL, this is not the Olympics, where I need like a gene mutation to be an Olympic runner or whatever it is. I was like, all it is is replicating body language, word track, and tonality. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was like, let's say Andy's the top guy. I'm like, hey, if I just if I can just get those three things, then it's, I might not be as good as Andy, but I'll be 80% as good, 70% as good, and that's pretty dang good to get get really good results. So I looked Facts. at the top people, I was like, I'm gonna shadow you, and I'm gonna be annoying, and I'm gonna do whatever I need to. Work ethic was never the problem. I was always committed to doing the hardest work in the room. That was so instilled in me. So then it was just skill. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now, and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. It's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history if you are? In the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. So you said a language, body, uh, obviously, body language, yeah, like, like word tracks, word track, which yeah. is the, the words they use daily, yep. body language, and then tonality. Totally. Yep, and and the craziest thing for me, I gamified it, Andy, where I was like, it's kind of like taking the same exact test every day, every week. So no matter how, like somebody give me a test on Mandarin today, I might get a zero out of it. But if the questions are the same every single day. Yeah. Bro, I, I might get a 2% next day and a 4% next You're eventually the next gonna day. get 100. Yeah, it's, it was because it's the same test. Yeah. Every single, like the customers say about the same stuff. So it's I, the same I, test I call that over. sales intelligence. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people, you'll see them in industries where they're still getting hit with the same objection five years later and they're going, uh, and you're like, intelligence, bro, intelligence. If yeah. somebody smacked you in the face, and they came up to hit you again, would you yeah. start ducking like eventually? Start cover, right? Yeah, like our yeah. du duck, I mean, come on. And then, yeah. so anyways, dude, that's amazing. So like, look, notice this is just common sense. It's just not so common anymore, but like, that's awesome, dude. Like that, that little niche, that information makes a lot of people go, why am I not realizing it's the same test every day in my company and my job? Every single day. It's not a new one. There's nothing surprising. I'm not gonna walk in and go, I wonder what's gonna happen today. You know exactly what's gonna happen. Take that test again. You got a 70 yesterday, you get a 71 today. Yeah. And after 100 days, if you got a zero on the first day, you'd be at 100 after 100 days if you paid attention consciously. And Andy, so many people I found where they're very quick to commit four to five years of life. It takes, you know, average person takes five years to get through college. It's like, hey, I'm gonna give you five years of my life and 120 to 160 grand to then have a 30% chance of making 70 grand. And I was like, dude, if I just look at this, I, I did go to college, but even if I didn't, I'm like, if all I did is I'm not quitting, I'm working all the hours for four years, my output on that, and I was a finance major, I knew you know, Buddy's making good money, but nowhere near where you can make in sales and sales management. So I was like, mm -hmm. I have the same level attitude. I could five, six, seven X, but mm -hmm. sometimes people are so quick to commit to college and you look at it on an Excel sheet, you're like, this decision does not make sense compared to this decision where I'm gonna commit three, four, five years of my life. So that's what I did. I just stuck to it. I kept getting better and better and better. And you know, I saw people drop off around me and I just remember saying like, I've never been a quitter. I'm not quitting now. Like including football, bro. Like when I started in football, I was horrible. Yeah. I think JV, I was like the third string backup JV cornerback as a <sighs> sophomore. You gotta be pretty bad when your entire team's only 50 heads. You know, there's no cuts or whatever. And I was like, cool, like people are, what are they doing? What are the successful guys doing? Hey, they're doing track to get faster. Hey, they, they're lifting cigar. I'm going to do all those things, you know, and going from that. And I'm not saying I was like all state by any means, yeah. 
But Chia going better. from JV to like varsity starter junior year, and then you know getting Huge. some colleges approaching, like the the junior junior colleges, you learned and develop. being respectable at it. Yeah, yeah, it's like so. It was just I just kept going, you know, moving forward with that. And then I, I led teams, and I was yet again horrible at it. <laughs> I think yeah. there was 91 teams in the nation, and I was number 91 at the end of May. And I just started calling all the guys that were crushing. I'm like, if I call 20 guys, you know, 18 of them are going to think I'm annoying them, but the other two are going to take time to give me some pointers, right? And I took that and ended up being number two in the region. And it was just like, just knowing Huge. that everything is a skill set, everything can be improved. But it's during those moments, our emotion takes over too often. We're like, mm. oh, like, oh, I, I don't see it. And it's like, just if you just commit Can't X control amount your of time, feelings yeah. or your thoughts. Yeah. 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 I heard, heard our Mosey say sometimes I see people make decisions on emotions like they're, like they're a six year old child. Yeah. But Seriously. they're 25. 30 years old, right? Yeah. And it doesn't make sense. Well, you, I, I just had this meeting this morning with our team. Matter of fact, a lot of the things you said, you know, vocabulary, right? New language, new word tracks, new words, you know, tonality, right? Body language, just little things like that. And then also going back to your thoughts, your greatest responsibility in life is to control your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, dude, I can't make you happy. Your wife can't make you happy. Your kid can't make you happy. Only you can make you happy. You decide you're the gatekeeper to your mind and you yeah. decide what you let in it. Totally. And, and like, you know, like, so that's what I say. Like, I always tell my wife, I'm like, babe, I love you. I'm going to be a great man. I'm going to treat you really good. But the inside, the way that you see life and what's going on here is ultimately how happy you're be. And Andy, it's easy to have the right mentality once you've had the payoff, right? But it's like having that clarity before there's, vision, ev before there's evidence. Before there's evidence, yeah. right? And that's where that's it's the, like, that's you got to commit part. before. Yeah. I tell my guys all the time, it'd be like you saying, hey, First you show me the wood, then I'll go, uh, first you show me the fire, then I'll go chop down the wood. Don't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Right? First you show me the fruit on the tree, then I'll go plant the seeds. It's like, it doesn't but, work But you way. know what you did is that you hunted down the best. Yeah. And then you studied them. Totally. And human replication is like real. Totally. Like modeling, like you said, like, every, uh, can you, can you go into a little bit about like how you self-develop, right? Like, and not like, like with who, but like how, like. Like, do you emulate, do you study, like, like you study human beings, right? Yeah. Like, talk to us a little bit about, like, what are some things or some hacks that really have helped you on your self-development journey? I think even if you don't have a bunch of resources, um, if it's skill set, I tried to record people's pitches. And then I was like, where am I, where are the times in my life, like, because you have limited time. I was in college and I was doing sales and stuff. So I was mm -hmm. like, what are things where I can double up my time during a workout? Cool. Let me just play the audio and just be listening to over and over again while I was cleaning the dorm, right? So where are those, th while I'm on the drive, where are the things where I could double up on my time, get two things out of one? So that was one. And then, dude, like when I was getting going, I didn't have all the money to invest in everything like that. So I was like, all right, I'm going to buy audio books. I remember getting those, you know, old CDs. I remember Law of the Garbage Truck and whatever else I bought. And I remember what changed for me is realizing that the people that are really successful, I can't afford their time. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people get coaches and stuff and it's like if they only charge X amount, do they probably their time is not worth as much. So mm -hmm. I, I want to learn from the, the guys that are crushing it. So I got audio CDs and I told myself, I'm going to listen to this audio CD as if a Grant Cardone, a Andy Elliott, a Robin Sharma, whoever, as if they're literally coaching me directly. So I'm going to internalize mm -hmm. as if they're sitting in Dude, my passenger good. seat because now I Dude, can that's get from perspective. the best. Yeah. I just said that. Remember, change your lenses. Yeah. Like that dude, that right there, the ability for you to take yourself and put yourself in an imagination state that that's mm -hmm. happening, that's called crazy to society. But that's Matt, cool. Well, no, they don't no, make normal sucks, bro. I'm, no, I'm no, okay no. with, with Well, crazy. I wanted to say this though. Yeah. This is important. If you were to tell somebody that if they weren't on the same journey, right. Yeah. Um, or they were average, they would say, that's a little crazy. But if you go ask the most successful people in the world, they would say, you're doing it just right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I tell everybody they don't make statues of the people that fit in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They make statues of the people that don't. They make they don't make statues of haters and critics. They make statues yeah. of the people who are the crazy dreamers. Yeah. Right. So I love that man. Every see, I love learning the weirdness of people. And you just gave me a hack today, which is which is what I love. You know, I read books because I chew through somebody's life for 20 years, and I can chew through it in three weeks. Yeah. I mean, dude, this guy spent 20 years to learn this and I can learn it in three weeks. Dude, that's a hack. 
Another hack, which that was a hack I always do, because I'm like, I'm going to chew this guy up. I want to know yeah. everything he knows. I want to steal the way he thinks. I love that. Right? I just want to. I just want to hijack their brain. Right? Um, but then you were like, I envision that this person's actually coaching me, dude. That totally takes the respect and the uh, the consciousness you have for this training to a whole nother level. If I was listening to Tony Robbins training, and I'm just giving an example, like whoever it was, you know, if I was listening to Ed Milet's training. And he wasn't in front of me, but I was listening to his training. I may just be listening to it for entertainment. Yeah. I may not be focusing on education at this moment because I'm listening to it entertainment because he's really not there. But if he was in the room, I'd be pen, piece of paper, sitting there taking air notes, like, oh, my God, like, he's going to give me the magic nugget, the nugget that's going to change my life. Well, dude, if you did that, and that's the magic nugget, nugget listening to it, and people got a spiral notebook, pen, piece of paper, and took notes and got serious, dude, in one year, they would smoke everybody. Absolutely. It would yeah. be insane. That's a Absolutely good hack, bro. That I did a lot that. for me. I, I yeah. And I even told guys, like, I would rather a Tony Robbins on an audio than the local guy that I can afford for yeah. 50 bucks Facts. coaching call, right? Yeah, you got to like, go to the top. It'd give me, and the audio book costs 20 bucks. Yeah. No, you're in right. your case, podcast costs mm -hmm. $0 to listen to it for these guys, right? And I'm like, that's why I that's say insane. these, the, we're living a generation because I'm 44. You said you're 36. 36, yeah. Yeah. So we're eight years difference. But even you didn't grow up in a self development era. Even when you graduated, I mean, technology was a lot more advanced. Yeah. But, you know, we weren't in the self gen, I mean, I mean, in the self development era yet. Totally. Maybe until you, until you were maybe 20 that yeah, really well, hit dude, we were like buying stuff off barnes and nobles right Remember yeah, barnes and noble. Of 20, yeah, 20 bucks you rich dad buy. poor dad right harbacker yeah. whoever right and then yeah. and, and then, then, then it was cds that would get scratched up and you just buy new ones but mm -hmm. just i didn't have any music i did not listen to music for the longest time in my yeah. car because i was like dude it's a waste this pop in a cd and audiobook yeah and you gave a hack here for any poor people and I want to say, like, because, look, dude, a lot of the world isn't where they want to be yet. No. And so I'm not calling them poor, but I'm calling them, like, you're in that bracket where, you know, you can't, you don't have, you, like, you don't have those choices right now. So, dude, you can go buy these things and you can immerse in them. And then you can make enough money where you can actually do the real training with the big Absolutely. dogs at some point, right? Absolutely. Right. And that's what's happened, right? And at this point, proximity is power. And then you're just Huge. buying proximity with, with the dollars. But until you have it, you got to use your imagination. You got to get creative. Yeah. I wanted to get uh, really close to Patrick Bet David. So in the yeah. beginning, I bought some tickets and then I bought his books and then I watched every video I could find. And then as I became a little more successful, because, because if you can't use that knowledge, you're not going to do anything with the expensive knowledge, totally. right? Um, so I was a good steward to the stuff that I that I could get, and then after that, I started wiring a couple hundred grand every time I could get it because I knew that the, the ROI I got on that. Now, if I could just get the proximity, you know, the time, and understanding that he's a real human being and he's normal, just like me, and you're you're just like me, I'm just like me. That's successful, dude. All of us are just normal people who just some of us have abnormal learning appetites. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and then like how you handle hate. Like if somebody is a negative person, if there's haters, because as you rise, there's going to be totally. lots of haters yep. and hate's a trophy that only winners get. And so let's say you're getting a lot of hate. I, I, I was telling my, my team earlier, I said, hate is food. Yeah, It's food. I want you to think, feed me. Every day I wake up and I want to be fed. What did they say? What are they saying? Yes. Give me that. That I love that. Like that feeds me. That motivates me. Andy, I've done all kinds of sales, right? I crushed it at Cutco when I was there. Then I did alarms. Dude, door Cutco door. guys are dangerous, bro. Bro, we were, yeah, I was there. That's where I started yeah. at 18, and I was like, hey, we That's can figure this out. We can, we can rock. And then I did, you know, alarms, right? And it's like post, let's get real, right? Post 9-11, post knocking doors in Bible Belt, remote Texas. Yeah, I got some slurs. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. some, some interesting words. Yeah, yeah, but like back to what you said, my mentality was like, I'm going to be so successful that this is going to be laughable at some point, right? Yeah. I rem bro, I remember seeing Confederate flags. Right. And people come to door with guns and it was like, it became a fun challenge. I was like, dude, I'm going to get this out. I'm going to close this guy. Yeah. I'm going to see how many Confederate flags. I'm going to let him, I'm going to close him and I'm going to hold his gun while I do it. Oh, and I would get him to take pictures with their guns <laughs> and their Confederate flag. So when the next guy came to the door saying, I already have guns, I'm like, hey, so did this guy. Okay. So how do you create that mentality? I, 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 I don't know. know dude. I know it's just by like going through adversity, but like, like, what were you thinking? Andy, what are the options? Good, I right? like, like that. Like, what, will I what, let this What stop option me? do I have? I either say, hey, I'm going to let this impact my success. So I'm letting somebody who I disagree with, who whatever is mother effing me, and I'm going to mm -hmm. let them have the win or I'm going to use it as a chip on my shoulder. So it's like 
you got it when you boil down to it, what are the options? Yeah, guys, I love that. So I want you to ask yourself this. Next time somebody says something really hateful I, or whatever, whatever happens, it doesn't matter what happens, yeah. right? Just you need to say, will I let this stop me? And if the answer is no, keep going. Yeah, exa right? exa absolutely. Yeah, I love that. All right, man. So you're in sales, you're crushing it, you're doing all this stuff. Um, how long ago did you get into the solar industry? Uh, about six years ago, got into the space, got brought over to be a CRO for a company I was on a podcast. They, you know, helped them grow two, 300%. Uh, looked around, the guys weren't getting paid. And I was like, hey, it's okay. Don't worry about my paycheck. Like, just let's just pay the guys. And then did that long enough where I looked around. I was like, dude, I'm owed half a million bucks, right? Like, personally. And that's, uh, that's no fun. And then in that case, you're just the company pretty much folded and can't do anything about it. So either you, you know, sit in sorrow or you do something about it. And then mm -hmm. we started a solar sales org. We had an installer There's taken six months to install, forever to install. And at one point their balance to us is $730,000. Mm -hmm. So we were backed up and keep in mind this whole time, I'm writing checks to guys out of my personal accounts. Thank God I did well enough in sales to have plenty of investment income coming in. Yeah. So I'm writing guys checks and then we win a judgment but against them. it's just them. super unhealthy. Oh, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. yeah, it's like I, we won a judgment against this company for maybe 600 grand and then they fall bankruptcy. So now I'm $1.2 million hit and the whole time, you know, my wife is awesome and she's like, dude, like not only are you not getting paid, you're writing people checks out your personal account to make your guys whole. And I'm like, I get it, but I don't want that on my conscience. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're hearing me talk to my brother Asim here right now, clearly you can tell he's extremely successful. This guy is wealthy, but he loves making other people wealthy. That's why I have him here with you today. He's got in a level, I would say a level 10 earning opportunity, but I'd say a level 11, which means I'm outside of the 10. Why? Because you're going to make a lot of money, but also they're going to teach you how to invest it to actually generate and accumulate real wealth. Dude, having a mentor inside of a company, working for the great organization with a great leader and somebody that can show you how to get wealthy doesn't exist. Just doesn't exist anywhere in the world. So there's two ways I want, if you're looking for your way out, if you're looking for a killer opportunity, just like Asim was born in Pakistan, his dad was a cab driver and he created his own way. Okay. And if you're looking for your own way and what you're currently doing, the play you're currently running isn't working, you need to run a new play. And if you've got the courage to do it, hopefully this podcast has given you the courage to say, Hey man, I'm worth more. And a leader like a scene will take you there. So number one, go down right now in the description box in this YouTube video and just click on the link answer the questions, fill out the little video, and a team will reach out to you in the next 24 hours or his team. And that's it. They'll send you the information, you can get it handled, and then they'll jump with you on a call, okay? So I just want to tell you guys, I appreciate you, I love you. If you're looking for your way out, if you're looking for a level 11 earning opportunity, you found it. Let's get back to the video. Right. Dude, well, I and want to stop everybody right now, because I want you to keep going, but I want you to think, is a seam a good guy? Like, like... Look at his heart. I always say this, like the heart tells everything, yeah. right? Me and my wife hire by the heart because we can fix everything else. Yeah. Okay, human beings have all kinds of problems and we can figure out how to solve all that. But, yeah. but examining somebody's heart and finding a good heart just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So like, dude, I love that. That's dude, amazing. I, I appreciate okay. it. And, but again, it wasn't easy at no, the no, time. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't no, no. easy at the time. But, I want, but you made but, it through it though. Yeah. And dude, and that... The reason why, if anybody was looking for the reason why, if they want a great opportunity, they want to earn a lot of money, they want a great organization, they want a great leader, they want to have a great future, you want to have choices, why they would join a scene, you just gave the answer to it all. When you care about people that way, whoever cares the most wins. And nobody cares that much. So that's amazing. So then so then you go through that, and then what did you guys do? Your sales org, your 1.2 in the hole. And I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to figure out how to install, just like everything else. We sucked, and then we got really good, and now we're one of the best in the country in terms of speed to install, customer experience, and all that. But it's I just tell our team all the time, every quarter we got to look back and say, man, we when we look back three months, we got to be like, this is a whole different company because of how much we've improved. Yeah. Just like an app, right? Like everyone rips on – hey the company changed but you're you're supposed to change and grow right and yeah. in the po most well, positive change is growth yeah yeah so it's like if you download your app it's like version 2.1 2.2 2.3 it's like cool what's our next version and even three months from now i promise you andy we're gonna look back and say dude this feels a completely different company right and for our internal guys we're doing all kinds of stuff they're they're making a ton of money we're taking them really awesome vacations we just took 54 people to costa rica Right, that was a fun check for somewhere around 200 grand. We're mm -hmm. taking a group to, to Dubai, Atlantis, the Palm in Dubai. The one before that was Dominican, Hard Rock Punta Cana. And I'm like, hey, let's help people make good money. Let's give them epic adventures because we, 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 we have zero outside ownership. 
And that makes us very unique because it allows us to do what we want for our people instead of saying, I needed to raise money and now I have a board controlling me. That makes yeah, us so that unique. Sucks. Yeah. And that's where every company I see is going south. Totally. Because those people on those boards, they don't care about any of those people on the ground. They're not on the ground. They're nope. not getting their hands dirty. Right? Like me and my wife, we live on the ground and our hands are always dirty, right? Because we're grinding with our team. And we we love our people, man. Like to Same. to write a small check to somebody I care about is very heartbreaking. It's like they're my kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, you just have a special love, and that doesn't exist anymore. And by the way, that's called an environment. Yeah. And like you've created such a kick-ass environment in your company where people really can get it all. Yeah. Right? Like you don't want to have a good marriage and be great a great father, but then have your guys not be happy with their families. Totally. Yeah. What good is that? Yeah. It, it's it's nothing. not fulfilling. Yeah. Making money. And honestly, like, I'm going to say like, like being financially okay and not liking your life is where I find most people nowadays. Well, it's the biggest failure. It's the yeah. biggest failure in yeah. life. Dean Graciosi like... just said that same thing. He said, that's actually the biggest failure of them all. Yeah. Is that, you know, and, and I want, so I want everybody to think about this. So here we are, we want to make a lot of money, right? And so here you go, you go sell your life. Right. And, and really you do just like, I'm going to go, cause you gotta be, you gotta be sold on something, right? Totally. So like, I gotta go do this. And then you've got this thing over here that you love and you say, guys, I've got to go, you know, cause if I don't sacrifice, right? Like I can't get this, you know, either sacrifice for what you want or what you want becomes a sacrifice. Totally. You got to pay the price. So, and it, you do have to pay the price, but so you'll chase this thing and then you lose this thing. And then when you, if you do get this thing, which some people do, especially if you sell out all the way, you get this and you look up and you got this giant hole in your heart and you're like, oh my God. I had everything that I wanted and I wanted to add the financial part, but I actually lost what was most important to try to chase this. Totally. And then, so you've created an environment in which you teach people, you show them, cause you're a coach, yeah. you coach people, you're an, a business owner, you're, uh, uh, you've done it yourself. So like it's proven, everything that you've done is proven. It's not in theory. Yep. I always say there's theory teachers, right? And then yeah. there's applicant, like you've applied all of these things in your life and that's why your life is great. You're also a good person, like your intentions are good. And I think as you've gotten older, your intentions continue to get better, right? Yeah, money's just an amplifier, right? Money's an amplifier and it's, you know, it's like the Maxwell thing where he says you, you teach what you know, but you replicate who you are, right? Mm. So the reason we have such an investing culture, the reason so many of our guys are investing so much is they've seen my career path in sales and I owe everything to sales. Let me say that, point blank, end of story. I owe everything to sales for everywhere I've gotten in life. And they saw me invest that money to get to seven, 800 grand a year in passive income from my sales income all those years. Yeah. So even if the company and, and it's like, hey, I'm just writing out checks left and right and solar installers, I'm sure you know, I've run on like a four to 5% EBITDA margin. Like that's not a lot, right? Yeah. So they've seen me create it. That's also why we have a culture of so many people that have great relationships, but also they're investing, they're getting ahead and they're, mm. they're tracking their job optional and my commitment to them is like when it's time and, and if you want to walk away at that point, cool. Like I will support it. We will celebrate it. It is not going to be like me trying to get the, you know, the golden handcuffs on you if that's not what you want. Like we yeah. genuinely want this place to fast track your life to whatever you want, like use empower to, to get the life that you want and we'll celebrate it. Use us, right? Like openly. Like yeah. that's totally cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But once you're on the inside, it's kind of like, you know, and you, you understand what's going on and you've lived in the other world and then you live in this world because you're going to have so many offices open up all around the country. Totally. I mean, they're going to be everywhere. Like anyone yeah. who's in your company, anyone who's in your company, if they want to be in California, they could end up in California. If they want to be here, they want to be there. I mean, this there's a road that leads really everywhere, I think, to where you're going. And so like everybody will have options to be everywhere. And Absolutely. once they're in this world, I can't see them wanting to be outside of that community or ecosystem. Totally. But I just yeah. want them to know there's no oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, no like limiting we're not, beliefs. We're not like, yeah, hey, we don't like, own you. Like we, even if somebody graduates on, we know yeah. they'll, they'll 10, 10 more will join, you know, the vision yeah. of the mission we got. Yeah, we love you. If we could make you better, if we helped you with your life, you know, kick ass. Yeah, and it's money is awesome. But like in those three, four years, and you see this in sales, where it forces us to grow our emotional intelligence. It's like who they become in those four years, they'll look back and say, man, who I became was infinitely more important than the money I make. And I think that like, to me, that's the good stuff, right? When they are 60, 70, 80, and they're like, man, my time at Empower, I'm so grateful because it allowed me to get, become a better father, a better everything. husband and, and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's like the epiphany bridge. It takes you from who you were to who you needed to be to make this life awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, guys, well, number one, 
everybody make sure Asim, how do they follow you on social media? Uh, at under uh, Asim underscore three six zero underscore. So A S A S I M I M underscore three six zero underscore. Okay. And you'll get to see it all. You'll see the financial stuff, you see the solar stuff, you'll see my family stuff. It's it's yeah. my life three sixty. It's I'm your life three sixty. Make sure you guys go follow Asim on Instagram. If you if you have a great opportunity, if you have a great job right now and you're just killing it, you own your own business. I know you have a lot of mad respect for him right now. Go follow him on Instagram, roll with him, make sure you shoot him a DM, right? Be like, dude, I watch your stuff on Andy's stuff, that was awesome. But let's talk about the people right now that are like, dude, I've been looking for my way out. And that's the easiest for me, you know, the way for me to see it is that like Maybe you have some of the things that you want in your life, but you don't have everything that you want. Like that's called being one dimensional, right? Like you need to understand the art of fulfillment and the art of achievement both have to be met. So you can achieve, but if you don't fulfill, you'll end up with regret. And I've been there and I know you've probably been there too. And, and you know, it, it sucks, man. And honestly, it's just, I wish I had a good coach tell me that, look, dude, if you can't find both of them, like, someone can offer it you just have to find that person that's what i love about social media now that's what i love about the time we live in now is that you guys are able to meet a seam there's a, a rare few people like a seam that are in this world but most of the time it's like when you need them when you're looking for that opportunity um it, they're hard to find so there's two things i want to ask of you and then and then we'll we'll kill it and we'll rock and roll and i want to say this a seam number one anybody watching this they can text you uh, text they, dm yeah, text, DM, uh, you guys can go down to the description box below in the YouTube video, you can click on that link, fill out the information, they'll reach out within 24 hours. Secondly, if that's not you, and you're watching this, and you're like, man, this was a great freaking educational podcast, I love this guy, you know, I fell in love with this guy, through this, you know, this video, I love this, um, I don't need this, but I know someone who does. Hmm. Like I, cause, cause, dude, I know some people right now that I'm like, as soon as we're done, like I'm gonna send them this video and yeah. I'm gonna be like, you guys, I found your way out. Yeah. And, and it, it may not be for me, right? Because because I've, I've got some things going on, but maybe my opportunity isn't good for these people, but this opportunity is good for these people. Just share the video. Yeah. That's all you gotta do, share the video, okay? Um, you know, um, but I love you guys, I appreciate you. Asim, you wanna end it out with anything special, something from your heart, anybody watching this? Did I... Uh... I think one of the biggest things being born not in the U.S., um, I would encourage people to go visit a third world country, go to Jamaica, go wherever, see how hard those guys hustle on the beach to sell you that necklace. And I think sometimes travel to those areas is so important because it reminds us the most valuable thing we have in the U.S. is not technology, it's not money, it's opportunity. And in this country, as long as you're willing to work your tail off, you'll get ahead. In other countries, it's not the case everywhere. Like there's That's people right. that are working 10 times harder than me in Pakistan that are, you know, they just don't have that opportunity. So don't take opportunity mm. for granted. Mm. Uh, and the second thing that's been really impactful for me is actually from uh, CEO of, of Vivint in the old days, sold the company for like 6 billion bucks. And mm -hmm. he said, uh, he once said, uh, his dad taught him life response to effort not to goals and dreams, mm. right? And that's really stuck with me, is like this concept of life response to effort. So if I put in massive effort, everything else will work itself out. That's right. You can't get something out of something that you didn't put into it. Yeah. yeah. I literally just had this meeting this morning. Yeah. I told my team, I said, some of you in here, you're not getting the results that you want. Some of you are. And the difference between all of you is the ones who are getting out the big numbers are putting more in than the ones getting the small numbers. And that's it. Dude, you, you, do, you don't you can't pull you can't, out of it. You don't get to complain about the results you didn't get with the work you didn't do. Mm. And unfortunately, it happens a lot in this world. I love that quote. Yeah. I just want to tattoo that on a three people's face right now. Dude, go for it. Let's, okay. let's rock. Um, all right, man. Hey, Asim, hey, thank you. Great meeting you. Thanks for Seriously. having me. I yeah. appreciate you yeah, and your crowd. It. You guys yeah. are awesome. Yeah, you bet, man. And listen, guys, he's out here with me in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, where do you live at? Where's your home base? Connecticut. Yeah, I flew out here from Connecticut to be with us, and I asked him, I ran into him at an event in SolarCon, I said, dude, I gotta have you on my podcast, um, just because I gotta share you with the world. I see the way he interacts with people, I've watched how fast he's growing, I see the way that his people are growing, and I'm like, this is like the realest of the realest. The, the biggest, scarcest resource in the world right now is leadership. leadership. This guy is such a good leader. And so I'm like, you guys need to be around him, you guys need to kick ass with him, and uh, now you know him. So anyways, we, we appreciate you guys. We love you. Asim, thank you so much. You guys have a blessed day. Share this with someone who needs it. And I'll see you in the next video.
Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.